What is going on guys, Blink here, back with a new guide. This video will be less on fighting tips and more on things that you might not be doing when you're moving locations. Also, the V-Bucks giveaway is still going on, so make sure to visit the link in the description to enter. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications as I post an Amazon gift card code in the comments every time I upload. By turning on notifications, you'll have a way better chance of getting here first and redeeming that code. Anyways guys, let's get this guide started. Try memorizing a few routes. This will give you many advantages while playing. The first advantage is that the more you repeat the route, the more efficient you'll be at doing stuff, like looting, because you'll know where all the chests are or you'll figure out patterns that are the fastest ways of looting. This can also help you find some meds inside chests, just in case you finish up fighting and you're low on health. The next advantage is that it can make you more aware of your surroundings. Now what I mean by this is say you leave a certain area because you heard some shots up ahead, you fight it out and kill the player. The fight only lasted a minute or so, so you head back to where you started because maybe the circle is in that direction or you didn't finish looting. Now you notice a few trees missing or even one tree missing depending on how well you know the area and you remember seeing that tree there before you left the fight. Now this can also be a vehicle on the road or even those wooden panels that drop a bunch of wood. Just anything missing can alert you that there is an enemy not too far ahead and you should be more cautious of your surroundings. Great little advantage especially because it'll make you more prepared for a potential fight and you'll be scanning your surroundings a little more than you usually do. This next quick simple tip is to make sure you're checking your weapons after looting. If you kill someone and you need to heal, heal up in a box and check if your weapons have been reloaded before leaving. Or if you don't need a heal, then as you run, make sure you're switching between each weapon just to make sure they have all been reloaded. I'd used to forget to do this and I'd enter the next fight with one pump shot or an easy sniper shot that I miss out on because my sniper doesn't have a mag loaded. Or sometimes you just get caught up with checking your surroundings and you forget to check your weapons. Just make it a habit to switch between your weapons as you move locations. So this next tip is about materials. So say if you have a low amount of materials at around 200, then what do you do if a player starts shooting at you? If he's pretty far, try challenging him with a few shots back. If nothing's connecting and you're getting really low, then you'll have to build backwards to get out of his sight so you can gather more materials. Now if he's medium to close range, then you want to be as aggressive as possible. The reason for this is if you sit in the same spot, your opponent will keep destroying your materials till you have nothing. Then the real struggle will be when you have no materials. So dedicate all your materials to build towards him for an aggressive fight. Use what you have to gain the advantage and play with aggression. Now if you have no materials left at all, then your only chance is to use any cover you can find and your aim will be your next best thing. Hopefully you can aim pretty well because you'll need to damage your opponent before he destroys the only cover you have. I try to at least have 450 wood to be comfortable when moving around. This brings me to my next tip which I talked about in my previous videos which is destroying the wood inside buildings. Destroy wood pieces as you find weapons. This is essentially good because recently Fortnite had an update that lowered the amount of wood you get from trees. Not a good update because it just makes us players spend half the time gathering wood when we want to get out there and fight. So, to make up for the wood loss, gather wood from buildings. You can come up with around 100 to 150 wood per house, which does add up. I comfortably like sitting at around 450 wood throughout the game, but I'm usually around the 600 to 700 mark because the wood does disappear pretty quickly. Remember that you can also gather wood from players. It's good to assume they have wood and you don't need to gather any, but there is a chance that they might have nothing and you're still stuck at 100 to 200 wood. Then you get into a situation where you have low wood and you're in a fight with a good player. So, keep track of your materials. Now, now this last tip is when moving around add in a jump because you never know who can see you. By adding in a jump you'll make it harder for targets to land shots on you, especially players sniping. If you get sniped you're already at a pretty big disadvantage and you never took a shot yet. This is why I take advantage of players that don't jump and just run. Now say if you're in a storm and you don't have any meds and you can potentially die, then don't jump. Just keep following the purple line and run. Don't add the jump because every jump does slow you down and it will add up. You're an easier target to hit but I'd rather be an easier target to hit than not make it out of the storm at all. So that's the only reason you shouldn't be adding those jumps. Now another reason why you should be adding the jump is to scan your surroundings easier. Every few jumps you want to add a half turn motion to your jump. By doing this you keep your forward momentum as you look around. Don't just turn around because first of all your running momentum is gone. When you move sideways or backwards your player model doesn't run backwards or sideways. He walks. Which results in slower movements which means you're a slow target to shoot at. Also if you're running from the storm and you're checking your surroundings by walking backwards then that time does add up. You'll lose out on distances you could have traveled. Now what if you're the one jumping and you see a player walking or jumping just like you? If he's walking and looking backwards then in your mind it should be a pretty easy kill. Line up for some shots because they are much easier to hit on players that are moving in the same pattern. Now if he's jumping around and scanning then prepare for a harder fight. Maybe wait off on a shot until you get a little closer and you get a better angle to attempt it. You want to increase the chances of hitting your target because you never know how good he can be. If you can get a hit off on him then you already have an advantage so put some pressure on him. Now, 
Now, once again, guys, make sure you're adding in those jumps because they are essential to improving your gameplay. Well, that's it for this guide. Hope you guys have learned something new. This guide wasn't on some crazy combat tips. It was more on just being prepared and always making sure you have these habits down because these little things I explained you might have not been doing and as a result have gotten you killed. If you have been doing all these things, then you're heading in the right direction, so keep it up. Lastly, a like and a sub would be greatly appreciated as it does help me out a lot. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day or night and I'll see you on the next one.